So if you remember, we have eight main steps in the process chain, designing, conversion to a triangulation file like SDL, then, then conveying it to a CAM software, doing some setup, building it in the on the 3D printer, removing it, doing some post-processing, cleaning maybe, coating operations, and then use it in your application. We had gone through the first part, the CAD systems. We need to design it by using a CAD software. You cannot actually design it by your manual drawings. This is actually a must for digital manufacturing, editing manufacturing. You need to have it on a CAD software. And your model should be watertight since while doing the conversion or while taking the slicing, if you have some leakage in your part, then you will have problems. So we said that stereotography format is a de facto standard, even though we have many problems, still we are using it since still it's easier, simpler, the, the content of the file is simpler. But it, it has many disadvantages, we said that, we don't have any unit inside, color, material, no other information is stored in the STL files. These days, people are some standardization organizations are working on uh, different file formats for editing manufacturing, but they haven't finalized it yet. Probably it will take some more years. And that's why we are still using the STL files frequently. And then in the third step, we simply transfer our STL file to the CAM software. We do some modifications, some scaling, some adding textures. Even we may add textures on the CAM software. Some letters may be added. Sometimes uh, it, if the part is quite uh, larger, we may do some segmentation. We separate them into smaller parts and try to build it maybe in the same uh, batch or in the second batch. Another issue we can do uh, since the fabrication is done at higher temperatures, after the parts, parts are cooled down to room temperatures, there usually happens some shrinkage. In order to eliminate it, what we do is simply scale it a little bit larger so that once shrinkage happens, it will be at the to the design dimensions. These things we mentioned, we may even do some merging operations. You may import many STL files into the bat, into your CAM software, and then do some joining operations right on the CAM software. We also discussed the fourth setup, fourth step in our previous lectures. This is the CAM software side. Once you import your STL model design file, then you need to do some uh, setting about, for instance, about the interior percentage, whether you are going to fill it completely with material or just 50% of the part will be filled. You need to do some selections on the materials. You need to select the layer thickness. You need to set the speed for the laser maybe or set the speeds for the extruder heads, you may need to set the temperature for the material. So there are many issues and these are much more complicated, especially for the metal systems. Sometimes you may need to do kind of an optimization on let's say temperature on the length of your support structures. There are many issues and you need to perform a kind of an parameter optimization. So once you have an in proper setup, you have obviously less quality parts and you need to do your fabrication once again. Another issue for most of the time, you need to do some physical preparation. You need to, do, you need to clean the table, check that you have enough material in your cartridges. You need to do leveling if you are using a desktop type of triple F systems. In the uh, professional ones, actually, these physical uh, sets up, setups are usually done in an automated manner, but if you are using a home type of 3D printer, you need to do most of these 
on your own. So now we are actually at this step. We discuss up to the end of fourth step. Now I will quickly go through the remaining four. So in the fifth one, things are not that complicated. You simply transfer the result of your CAM software, the result of your fourth step into the machine. And here, most of the things are done with the help of the computers inside the 3D printers. Sometimes we have uh, real-time computers, or sometimes we make use of simple microcontrollers. But we can say that the rest of the steps are computer control. And what actually these computers are doing, they simply perform sequence of layer layering. We perform a layering operation for the Slacky technology. If you send triple F, we extrude material by using our access motion system, extrude material. If it's some, let's say, powder bed system, we spread powder and then with the help of laser, we sometimes sinter them or sometimes melt them. So in this sequence of layering, we perform these operations many times. Yes, these are things I mentioned, and we need to repeat it until the part is fabricated. And then in the sixth step, it's one of the easiest steps. We simply open our system and remove the part. But the thing is that sometimes it might be inside a powder bath, so you need to clean it with some of your extra equipment. So this might this may actually require some extra post-processing time. And if you are using a metal system, and uh, for the metal parts, we prefer to use support structures or overhanging features. Even it doesn't have, have an overhanging feature, we may need to have a metal support underneath so that it will be easier for us to remove it from the base. But once you have metal supports, things are quite complicated. You cannot easily remove the support structures. You need to use an maybe a wire EDM machine. I don't know whether you remember this process, wire electro discharge machining. You're a wire and by using electrical arcs, you try to separate two metal parts from each other. Or you may simply use a band saw and try to divide your part or remove the support structures. Lastly, you may use some milling operations and try to remove them. So you may assume that this removing the support part is a kind of an initial part for the post-processing stage, which is the seventh stage in our pipeline. And in this post-processing, we have many operations. Depending on your application, you may do some abrasive finishing. You may do polishing so that the surface quality will be improved or some scratches, some marks may be removed with the help of these polishing or sandpapering. Or you may do some kind of coating. You may coat your part with maybe some metals. With, you may do some painting, so it's up to you. Uh, even you may have some chemical treatments. And again, with the help of them, you can increase the surface quality of your resulting product. Since we are using layer by layer based methods, we always have staircase effect in the actually inclined surface, inclined faces. And you may try to overcome this problem with the help of these post-processing operations. And even we can consider machining as a post-processing operation. In addition to removing the support structures, you may also use machining to, to adjust the final size of final dimensions of our 3D printed products. And in some cases, we will see that we can even do some infiltration. If your part is actually fabricated by using powders and you may have some gaps, some porosity between the powders and by doing infiltration, you may fill these gaps with a different material, with a different powder and you can increase the strength of your product with the help of this infiltration 
step. And obviously, the types of these post-processing applications are very specific to your end use. And lastly, it's not an important step. You can simply take your part and use it in your application. Obviously, this is since it's still a kind of a rapid prototyping system, the properties, the general properties of your final product may not be as good as the conventional approaches. There might be some small ways, there might be some gaps between the layers, but these are some usual problems in editing manufacturing, another problem. This one sometimes might be an advantage, but for most of the time, it's a bit problem. You will have anisotropic properties. Since it's not a casting operation, in casting, we usually have the same properties in all directions. But in additive manufacturing, since this is a layer based methods, we have different properties in Z axis and different properties in X and Y axis. So you should be careful of these issues and try to overcome these problems while designing your parts. And as I said, Sometimes you may convert this disadvantage into an advantage. If you design it properly, this may increase the strength of your part. So this is the final uh, process chain. We have gone through all these steps from designing to the end use. 